Okay, we're now going to learn a little bit more about some of the other settings in anticipation that some of you are going to want to use the dynamic, which I've been greatly avoiding, and you're going to see why as I stumble over the next 10 minutes. But um, all of these things along here, all these little tabs, have to do with the set of settings. If your settings are set right and you can use them, it'll work great. If you have the wrong thing on or set the wrong way, you'll stumble. Uh, and stumbling is fine. It's a part of design and drafting. However, in engineering, every now and then, you need to know when you are being exactly correct uh, in design and technical work. So if you want to go 50 feet in the X, 50.3947 in the Y, and 6.473 in the Z, a lot of you are going to have a hard time using the dynamic to do that. Or if you want to go exactly one mile, 37 feet, and 6 inches at an exact direction of 10 degrees off of the standard X position and at an elevation angle of 15.39 degrees, you're going to have a hard time oftentimes doing it in dynamic. Okay, so I have started up here. Um, you see that, again, I'm drafting at home, so I'm going to go over here to the model. I'll try to get this to look exactly the same, but pretty soon my AutoCAD 2010, you see its unregistered version there, is going to time out, so I may be doing these videos in 09 until I can get something installed to do that. Remember how you go up and down through here. That, of course, is your ribbon, which you're going to use a lot when you're using other tools, and you'll continue to use an AutoCAD as well. You've got a couple of toolbars you right click in the gray space that gets you a set of AutoCAD toolbars we've got the draw we've got layers and layers to and modify and view up right now you do want to learn to kind of establish I'm going to pull this one down I'll put the view down here in the bottom right kind of locks up there so I've got the draw and modify on either side my layers and layers two I'm sticking up there and so you may or may not have a whole bunch of things here Last thing you're going to realize, we're going to get pretty good later about realizing all these different potential drafting spaces you have here. That's down in your workspace. And annotation, there's lots of settings down here. We'll play around with the steering wheel for and a few of these others over time. But along here, you might have icons. Unless you speak icon, try to right click and change, I'm sorry, You want to change that so icons comes up. I mean, words come up, not icons. So I'm not going to be able to do that here. Display. Use icons. You see how that does that. Turn off the use icons. And up to now, you've had them all off. All right. So right now, I'm drafting on layer center line. You can see that there. I'm going to pull down and draft on layer object. You notice that object is turned off. And so I can either go to the layer thing here or just double click on that right there. Now layer is object is both my layer, my current layer, and it is the layer on which I am, and it is also on. I left click on something, right click, erase. Remember talking about Annette Funicello, um, Britney Spears, and um, Justin Turnbullake. So we got the mouse list. Um, Whatever it takes to get you to kind of learn that there's a lot of commonality between ways, the way software works in this world nowadays, that a lot of things are going to be mouse-based. And realistically, you'll start to see in this class, even the mouse starts to go away. Um, all right, so you've got a whole set of settings here. And most of these settings can be set off of the shift right-click on the mouse. So I'm just going to do that right just to show you what they are. Shift. I'm hitting an escape bar again, once again, didn't turn on my keyboard. So that should be part of my checklist at home, but I'm going to hitting an escape, escape, escape. Remember that is a great escape tool. Uh, different programs are going to have a different way to get backwards, but escape is the, what AutoCAD uses. I'm holding the shift right click. Shift right click, and you see here a lot of you have a list of snaps, but at the bottom they have the object snap settings, and that has a lot to do with what's coming across the bottom of the screen. So 
snap and grid when you use them and some of you may soon be using them if you're doing an electrical schematic F7 and F9 get turned on together I don't expect you to be turning them on here I expect you to be cording the F7 and the F9 together turning them both on or both off you have all kinds of settings for snap and grid you have a set of snaps for polar tracking and that will be kind of one of the things you'll probably use more often than not if you only have one or two different angles that are you're using so for instance we've done some things with 45 degrees you might that turn that to so it it grabs more or less the direction every 45 degrees you can add specific unusual angles here really useful object snap obviously up to now and we will continue to use shift right click and individually grab a an object snap but this is really one of the more important things to do if you're trying to really do production and you only have one particular snap you want to go to you can come here and click endpoint and it will find it as you're looking for it dynamic input we will come back to but this right here is the one that if you're going to use dynamic especially for changing things for like changing lengths understand what the settings are set up here and this is where you change it and then quick properties kind of shows we'll talk about what that does and how it shows you a real quick um, listing if you would of the data that of a, a particular thing that you put here in you put in all right so these are the kind of the drafting settings and that more or less if you go across the bottom, we dealt with snap, grid, ortho, polar, O snap, O track. We haven't quite dealt with O track. We'll come back to it. Dynamic UCS. We're not touching it for now, but it is an important, you know, incredibly important thing when you get into three dimensions. Dynamic turns it on and off. Line weight. All right. So we get to line weight, and I'm going to just put that on right now to let you know that line weight I will be using on a fair bit now so I get a better view at the screen. But the theory of lines is this, as is the theories of points. Points mathematically have just position, but they're really not there. They're infinitely small. Lines have no width. And if you get in the habit too early in drafting of giving your lines width on the space, you're really not thinking about what you're doing here, which is defining a line um, which has no width. I give you the example in a land plan. If you have you drop your penny on a lot line, it's either uh, maybe a penny is a bad example. Um, how about uh, a diamond? All right, it is either touching the other person's lot or not because that line is infinitely infinitely thin um, okay diamond was a bad example think about a tree and as you get into dealing with engineering I'll continue to profess the fact that we're, most of what we're going to be doing and all the technical work is going to be some point attached to land and land has ownership and trees become an important aspect of ownership of land so if that tree is slightly touching the neighbor's yard it, that neighbor has some rights to that tree as far as I understand it so um, they might not have half rights and that's something we can talk to our urban forestry people one of the few people that do not take uh, a design class using uh, AutoCAD so all right so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually go ahead and turn one toggle on right now and that's the line weight so now it's going to show line weight and if you remember object here if I go to the layer command look at the object as we get into this set of layer commands one of the line weights is just the default well I can now go ahead and change the line weight to make it somewhat thick so now as I draft on layer object it's going to come across on the screen with a certain thickness so I'm going to click now, and there it is. But here's the problem. It really is not supposed to have any line, any weight or thickness. So as I get drafting an example, I can be turning it on and off. right? That's a part of plotting, but it's really not something we want to do. We'll do plotting differently. All right, that's your first introduction. Thanks for listening. Stop.